Hey, I'm Jason with Burb Style. Today we're gonna install some Shimano brakes. We're unboxing the latest Shimano XT4 piston brakes here, but not much has changed in the last four or five years. The biggest difference between the models is how Shimano iSpec attaches to the shift levers. For more info, visit our website link in the notes below. If you're mechanically inclined, learning to install your hydraulic disc brakes isn't too bad once you learn a few of the tips and tricks. Proper setup and functional brakes are crucial for the safe operation of any bike, so when in doubt, have your work checked over by an experienced bike tech before riding. Before we get started, when you're unboxing everything, make sure to take inventory of all the parts you'll need to complete the repair and installation. As with any bike repair, an investment in the tools required is the first place to start. Having the proper tools to do the job is key. If you're just looking to bolt on a 11 speed pre bled disc brake, you can often get away with just the bare bones. A 5mm Allen wrench for the caliper, 4mm Allen wrench for the brake lever. You'll also need something to take the front wheel on and off depending if you have bolt on wheels. And uh, the tools will vary depending on how you're going to attach the rotor. If it's a uh, six bolt design, you're going to need a Torx T25 wrench most often. And if it's a center lock hub, you'll need to use a Shimano center lock rotor or lock ring tool of some kind. Brake lever goes on the bars. You got your cable routing. And then the caliper gets bolted onto the fork. If you're installing one of the 2020 models, they come pre-bled but unattached to the brake hose. So we start by sliding the lever onto the bar. If it's a rear brake, things are a little more complicated depending on the shifter you're pairing it with and whether or not you're running an integrated brake shifter mount. With previous models, you can install the brake and run them with the excess brake hose, then cut them to fit at your convenience. In the past, I would generally run mine on the long side, as I often reuse parts and swap them between bikes. Make sure you have the correct adapters on hand before starting the job. In this case, I'm installing these brakes on a Lyric fork and a transition frame, both of which use post mounts and can be used without additional adapters paired with the 7 inch 180 millimeter rotors. I always start by hand threading the bolts into the posts before switching to my T-handle Allen wrench. Tightening the bolts until just a bit of slack remains, I like to leave it a little bit loose so I can verify and center the rotor from the caliper. With a pre-bled brake, at this point I'll install the wheel with the rotors already installed. Okay, now we're going to center the calibers. Okay, so the, one of the easiest ways to do this is just to center this lightly, grip the brake lever, and then just tighten it up so it's snug. A new brake, it'll be centered. And it looks pretty good so far. What we're doing now is sighting down through the caliper, looking to see if it's centered in the brake pads. Okay, I'm going to sit up in the center and I'm going to grip the brake, have it hold the adjustment. I'm just going to tighten these down. I'm going to run this slightly less than super tight. In the event of a crash, the goal is that this should move, but you also don't want to be able to move it just normal to use. So, it's going to go pretty light. So if I do it with two hands, I can move it. Should be good. This is where our 8mm wrench comes into play. Now, basically what you're doing is you're going to loosen this piece. And then you're going to pull the hose out. You're going to cut it down. And we'll cover that in here in a second. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove front wheel from the bike. I'll show a trick because if you do this right, you don't need to bleed the brake. Is we're going to head pull the brake pads out of the caliper. 
Removing the brake pads, it's pretty much the same as just changing a brake pad. You release this pin, a little safety pin here. A lot of times you can get these off by hand, if not, screwdriver to help. Don't lose this, easy to flick these off on the ground. Then we use my multiple on key with a three millimeter wrench. Remove that. If you're running a four piston brake, I would install in a brake block at this point. This little trick is great if you have a two piston brake. By squeezing the brake lever, we're pushing the pistons out a little bit before we bleed the brake. Now what we're doing, if you can see in there, actually pushing the pistons out. It's a new brake, so it's going out pretty centered. Sometimes these go out unevenly. And I don't want to push them until they touch. I just want to go out a few millimeters. All right, now I'm ready to loosen this up. Once you've loosened the connecting bolt on the brake hose, it usually just takes a little bit of force to pop it free. Okay, once you've figured out the length you want to actually cut this down to, you're going to cut it. They do make tools. The main thing with this cut is it's a flush cut that's perfectly square. This is a very sharp, rarely used part cutting tool. I'm just going to use this because it works fine. You know, just be aware when you cut this, a bunch of fluids about to fly out. This is mineral oil, so it's not the end of the world. This is my garage, so just a quick clean cut like that. Dump that on the ground. That is cut. Dental pick. It's going to be one of your favorite friends in a, a good home shop. I'm going to take this dental pick and just make sure this fluid end is clean. I'm going to widen it up a little bit. Make sure this is a clean cut. Looks pretty good. Now to prep the olive in the insert. Make sure you have the correct length as there's two kinds. Okay, I'm gonna take this olive, slide it over for first, just write it down. And now we're gonna install this guy. You can even see it. Take this guy, get started. Now I got it in a couple millimeters. That made it a lot easier just to start it. Gonna tap it in. Can't quite get it all the way in. It is a press fit, so it does take a little effort. Shimano offers this cool little tool. Basically, you can clamp it on there like so. Adjust the head wrench. Just gonna tighten a little bit of clamping on there. And if you have a vice, even better. I don't. One of these days, the garage workshop will get one. And I'm just gonna tap this guy in. A little at a time. All right, it's installed. Wipe it down, make sure it's all clean. That piece is nice and flush. Already got my olive. Sitting down here at the bottom. And then I got my little barb coming up. And I'm gonna get ready to install this guy. Okay, now I just stuck that in there. This process hasn't changed much for the new 2020 models. The main difference is the olive is pre-installed already. Cut the hose to your preferred length and then install the connector insert as usual. Here's a pro tip. Make sure to have a rag handy so when you pop this little cap out, you don't have brake fluid everywhere, unlike me. Insert the brake hose and tighten the bolt with your 8mm spanner wrench. As you do this, the olive expands to form a press fit and a tight seal. Shimano recommends 5 to 7 newton meters of torque. And I'm just hand tightening this, making sure it's all the way in. Alright, now it's snug. At this point, we're going to tighten this. This is now crushing the olive and creating a press fit. That keeps the brake cable housed inside the master cylinder. It doesn't have to go super tight, so it's snug. Alright. 
Okay, it was shorter. All those compressed. Now it's time to go to our calipers and push those pistons back in. Okay, now we're gonna press the pistons back in. My favorite tool for this is the closed end of a 10 millimeter combination wrench. It's crucial you don't damage the pistons and that they're pressed back in evenly so fluid does not leak. Okay, now we're gonna install the brake pads. Brake pads, I've already got them set up with the spring. Make sure your hands are clean, you don't get brake fluid on these brake pads, left and right. Doesn't take a lot of torque. Add this little retaining clip back. Brake pads are set. Now we're gonna reinstall the front wheel. Always putting stuff down, that's why the workbench is nice. With the pressed out pistons trick, we generally don't have to ever bleed the disc brakes. In fact, we usually have too much pressure built up in the system. If there's a little too much pressure, take your Phillips screwdriver and unthread the free stroke screw a couple turns. Yeah, it does serve a purpose. If all the bolts are tightened down, it's time to go for a quick test ride and bed in the brake pads. One quick trick we like to do is spray some clean water on the rotors. Find a slight incline to coast down and lightly feather and drag the brake pads. The goal is to disperse brake pad material on top of the rotor evenly so it doesn't grab at any one point too much. Spraying water on the rotors helps speed up this process. Sometimes I'll even use rubbing alcohol as well. If too much fluid spilled or you got air in the line, you'll want to bleed the lever. Fortunately, Shimano makes it super fast and easy for us to do, provided you have the Shimano Simple Bleed Kit. To bleed the lever, we just need the Shimano Oil Funnel and the Shimano Mineral Oil. With the stopper in place in the funnel, add a bit of fluid. Make sure the lever is placed higher than the caliper to ensure air rises to the top. Rotate the brake lever horizontal and as level as possible. Then remove the bleed port screw and put it somewhere clean. Then thread the loaded funnel into the bleed port. Remove the stopper and then just start squeezing that brake lever. And watch brake fluid displace the air in the line. There's always something super satisfying about just watching those air bubbles rise out of the system. Tapping and wrapping on the brake hose can help displace any air bubbles that might get stuck. Once the air bubbles have stopped raising the top, you're good to go. Replace the stopper and unscrew the funnel. Then all that's left is to replace the bleed screw and wipe off any excess fluid. And of course, finally, readjust the brake lever to how you like it. Give everything a final check over, and then you're ready to ride. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial was useful. If it was, please give us a like and subscribe. See you on the trails.